everybody. Great to be with you again on Bless Leaf Live. I know it's been a couple weeks since we got something posted, but that's how it goes, man. <laughs> We're busy. We're super busy, but I'm Kyle Hoover. I'm the lead pastor, and uh, man, it's just uh, so nice to be able to light up a cigar and talk about the Word of God. It is such a, a cool thing. It's like my my two favorite things in, all in one thing. <laughs> Smoking the uh, Guayacan uh, Habano today. And this is a cigar that I'm a huge fan of. My good friend, Noel Rojas, makes it. And uh, he and his factory... Um, we make our cigars, uh, some of our cigars with him, uh, is a fantastic cigar maker. And if you've never tried any of his stuff, uh, his, his company's, uh, brand is Guayacan and he makes this cigar and also it's in a Maduro. Uh, and then he has a line called Sabor de Esteli. And if you haven't had those, I'll tell you what, missing out, missing out. You need to get immediately after this video, <laughs> you need to go get a Suborda Esteli Lancero. I'm telling you, it's a limited edition uh, Vitola for that particular blend. And I think he has like a Robusto Toro and stuff in that. But shoot, you want a good smoke? That is an absolutely fabulous smoke. Probably in my top five, at least top 10 cigars of all time. Absolutely beautiful, balanced cigar. Uh, it's amazing. So, Sabor de Esteli. It's got like a woman on the band with her like dancing around on it. And like a pink skirt. So, yeah, it's random, but it's like, oh, it's a really, really good smoke. In fact, as I'm recording this, uh, Noel is supposed to be coming into Texas. And I think we're supposed to be going out for, uh, for dinner tomorrow. Hopefully all you can eat ribs or barbecue or something and smoke some cigars. Which I like because that gives me the chance to um, raid his humidor. And he always has some good some good stuff he's working on that he brings and has us try and everything, which is very, very cool. So I appreciate that. While I'm getting lit here, um, let me uh, just tell you, blessleaf.com, if you haven't joined, it's an online cigar church. Uh, or cigar. It's a church online for cigar enthusiasts um but we'd love for you to join that it's totally free just go up set up an account profile it's like a social networking site that allows you to post and to share if you have prayer requests or something god's put on your heart you can write up a thing or uh post a video something like that uh everything does go through an approval process which is basically us looking at it make sure it's not some weird naked thing in you which would be you know not right <laughs> but anyway uh it's it's good stuff on there and uh, appreciate uh, the members we have, um, not only all over the country, but all over the world. And uh, it's pretty legit. There's hundreds of people, and it's awesome. Uh, update on the next Blessed Leaf Cigar, before I get into the teaching. Do I have anything real concrete to tell you, other than we've gone through a couple different renditions, a couple different versions of it, and it's shaping up to be absolutely spectacular? spectacular you're you're gonna love it and uh i'm not exactly sure when we will launch that it's probably going to be sometime next year uh in 2016 but it's a fabulous shaping up to be a fabulous cigar um and so fingers crossed on that everything will shake out proper we'll be able to get the tobaccos uh that we want to use um, all the way sourced, and um, there's, anyway, I won't go into all the nitty-gritty about it other than just to say progress is being made, and uh, it's it's going really, really good. So, um, that being said, today I want to talk to you, and just kind of share with you a little bit uh, about Proverbs uh, chapter 2. I don't really have like a set teaching um, with, with notes and points and everything else. I just, I want to read through this chapter and just kind of give you my thoughts as um, the Lord ministered this to me. Uh, I was asked the other day if I had, you know, one book of the Bible 
uh, to read, what would it what would it be? What's like my favorite book of the Bible kind of thing? And I said Proverbs. I, I read a lot of Proverbs and Psalms. I really enjoy those particular books. Um, obviously, I got love for all of them, but those tend to the way that um, I'm wired and what God's called me to. Uh, Proverbs and Psalms is just like awesome. Uh, and so anyway, I read through those a lot and I was just freshly reading through them again here a few days ago and, you know, starting back over. And so obviously Proverbs chapter two, right at the beginning of the book, right after chapter one. And, uh, it just freshly spoke to me again. The thing about Proverbs is, you know, the, the beginning, it goes into a whole lot of like, Hey, you need to listen to me kind of stuff. And it's real easy to kind of just read over that real quick until you get into the actual, you know, post chapter, what, seven and eight, whatever it is, uh, where you start to get into the actual little Proverbs, which would be like stuff you could write on a little fortune cookie. You know, it's like the little one verse, little wise sayings kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's 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 before that. It's kind of laying the groundwork for the whole book of, hey, shut your mouth and listen. You're going to really need to listen, and here's why. That's kind of the first part of Proverbs, which I dig, because um, I need to shut up and listen. And it's it's real easy in, in our day and age to be distracted. And I would I would submit that if you're like me, you can go through life, if you're not careful, living a distracted life. Um, it's easy for me to be doing one thing or be doing something, that's a great smoke, doing something and your, your mind somewhere else or on five different other things because you've got so many irons in the fire and so many things going. You've got uh, work stuff and other work stuff and other work stuff and then you've got uh, church stuff and family stuff and extended family stuff and um, just everything, it's like it's vying for your attention. And uh, the last uh, video that I posted up here was about um, being overly busy and finding time to stop and and maybe that's this is kind of a a little bit of a part two about that but I've really tried to be intentional about being where I'm at and not living a distracted life and I don't want to live and this is good I don't want to live a hurried life I want to go fast but I don't want to be in a hurry if you know what I mean by that I want to be efficient I want to do things well I don't want to procrastinate but I also don't want to rush through my life because when you hurry you do things wrong and you don't take the time to uh, to stop and to make uh, wise decisions. And sometimes the best thing we can do is take a minute and... Sorry, someone coming up on me. Someone's creeping up on me over here. <laughs> uh, make wise decisions. Um, uh, because you don't want to make a uh, permanent decision in like a temporary circumstance. And my dad always said, you know, patience prospers. And so I want to I want to do things diligently. I want to do things intentionally, but I don't want to do them sloppy. I was almost going to say sloppily, sloppy, and um, because we all we've all been there, we've all done that. So just kind of looking at that, and I'll blow up my phone here with with the Bible, my Bible app. It's 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 good to to look at something like Proverbs too. So let me just start reading this. Yeah, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Because it's King James without all the these and the thous in it, you know? Kind of. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so verse 1. It says, my son, if you receive my words. Now, you got to stop right there. Here's an if, which this is a, it's an if-then. The Bible's full of if-thens. A lot of people like to talk about the promises of God and the good things of God, but God's promises promises are conditional. That's what people don't understand, is that he, he it's a, he's a if-then God. It's kind of like everyone thinks uh, or will say, you know, uh, oh, everybody goes to heaven. No, they don't. It's an if then, if you repent, if you're forgiven, no, then you go, you live for me, then you go to heaven. That that's the thing. God is its promises are conditional. And a lot of this stuff uh people like to quote promises of God and stuff for their own life and everything else, but they don't realize that a lot of these are are if then kind of things. So, whenever I see the word if, I know that there's there's something that needs to be done on on my on my end. Uh, and then God will respond. God, God is a uh, God's a harvest God. Uh, we get to determine the seeds we sow, the things we do and say, and the 
we're, we're, if you will, we're sovereign over that. We make our own decisions, but God's sovereign over the consequences of the harvest of those decisions. Um, so he's basically like when he, when he told Israel, okay, I said before you life and death, you choose. I hope you choose life because I want everything to be all good with you and everything else and all y'all's kids and everything after you, but it's ultimately up to you. And so when I see the word if in the Bible, that's, you know, it's a two letter word, but it's, it's a huge, huge word, um, that a lot of people, Christians, when they read the Bible, um, they miss. So my son, if you receive my words, so here's, here's a condition. You got to receive the words. Don't just, don't just hear me. You got to listen. You got to listen. You got to receive. You got to ingest spiritually the words that are, that the Lord is, is saying here. If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you. That's another huge thing. It's one thing to just say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and go out and just kind of do whatever you want. Um, and it's, you can know Jesus, know about Jesus, have a relationship with Jesus, and not understand his commands, which is basically his expertise on planet Earth, which is wisdom. It's his solutions to human problems. That's the wisdom of God, in case you were wondering. Okay, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding... That's verse two. Two things in there. Incline and apply. Huge. This is a proactive, intentional pursuit of the commandments of God, the wisdom of God, the expertise of God. To incline your ear to wisdom, which means to pursue it. Don't just, oh yeah, hey, I ran to this dude at the store. No, 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 no. What was the last time you actually went and pursued or inclined your ear to wisdom. What does that look like? For me, it looks like buying books, uh, listening to teaching, uh, and, and, and investing money, if you will. The Bible says, though it costs you all you have, get understanding, to actually purchase it. You know, you can go buy uh, a book, just say a John Maxwell book. John Maxwell, just say he's been in ministry for, you know, 30, maybe 40 years, I don't know. Well, he's got some really hard-learned lessons that took him decades to understand that you can get for a $20 bill. That's a, that's pursuing. That's inclining. That's a, that's applying your heart to understanding. Is 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 getting these things and and learning these things and the the wisdom of God that 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 other people have learned and the wisdom from the Word, obviously. Um, but but pursuing that, making this a priority in your life. If you apply your heart to understanding, yes. If you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. So we're seeing some intensity here, right? Now this is the kicker in verse four. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure. Now we're talking about. Full on, 100%, like going crazy to get the expertise, the wisdom of God, the understanding, the commandments of the Lord. This is, this is, this is his secrets. These are, this is his way of doing things that he's sharing with us. And God's expertise, if you will, his principles, you know, the Bible is everywhere. But it, it's almost like people have, they're spiritually dead if they don't know Christ. But it's like they have a veil over their eyes where they can't understand it. And the Bible says in, in, uh, in Psalms that the secrets of the Lord are for those who fear Him. It's like He hides those things away and then the Holy Spirit comes and we study and we're seeking, we're pursuing, and illuminates these things to us and gives us understanding. But it's if we have the intensity in our hearts and the pursuit of God, like, like David said, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Um, so back to verse 4. If you seek her silver and search for her as for hidden treasures... Then, so now we have the if in verse 1, we come to the then in verse 5. If you do all this stuff, if you are full-on, hardcore, thug life, pursuing the commandments of God, the wisdom of God, um, the knowledge of God, what he's like, what he would do in certain circumstances, how he would run his affairs and industry on planet Earth, how he would uh, navigate uh, relationships. All, all this stuff as it applies to everything in your life. If you pursue that, I mean with everything you got, then you will smoke a good cigar. <laughs> I added that. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So a couple things from that. You're going to understand the fear of the Lord, which the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The respect for God, which fear is not talking about being scared, different kind of fear. This is a, uh, this is a reverence of the highest degree, is what that means when it's talking about the fear of the Lord, where you so hallow 
his word and what he says, and you esteem it the way that it should be esteemed. See, here's what people don't want to admit. It's God's way smarter than all of us, right? And it's hard for us in our pride to not only want to want to admit that, but then to live like that. Uh, my, my pastor said something the other day that I thought, wow, that's a great term, is that um, there's a lot of Christians that we will give mental assent to something and you know we'll say, oh yeah, we agree like that, but then we go out and live like functional atheists. Think about that. That's huge. I, that stuck with me. I was like, man, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to use that. We live as functional atheists. We live our life as if there is no God. Even though we think or say, oh yeah, we, you know, I serve God, I'm a Christian, whatever. We don't live our lives that way. We are functional atheists in our, in our marriage, in our business, in our raising our kids, our, our, the time we spend in the Bible, um, and the degree that we govern our life according to what he says we should do. Functional atheists, not having the fear of the Lord. Um, so if we're back to verse 5. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. This is huge. This is huge. Verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. This, verse 6, is a, is a huge verse for me in my life. Because, you got to understand, the Lord here, it's, in your Bible, it's probably all caps. That's actually yod heh vav it's, it's the proper name of God. It's uh, it's Yahweh or Yahovah. There's a little bit of difference of opinion on the pronunciation, but it's God's, it's, it's his name. <coughs> it's saying that he gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. We understand that, that that's the word of God, that's um, the word of God through through people of God, that uh, we know that, you know, like Jeremiah, he said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Obviously, they'll line up with the written scripture, but God puts, you know, words uh, for our lives and everything, good counsel and that kind of stuff, in the mouths of people around us and in, in, in their hearts to share with us. Um, but it ultimately all comes from his mouth. He's the one that is the source of all wisdom, which this is what's awesome to me. There is no problem that I can have in my life that God does not have a solution for. Now, that sounds really simple. That sounds really, really elementary. But stop and think about what I just said. There is no problem that you have in your life, none, financially, uh, relationally, anything, physically, that God does not have a solution for. Now, what's the problem? Why aren't Christians, people who serve God, know God, and genuinely do, why, why are these people not absolutely thriving with what Jesus said he came to bring, which is abundant life? Um, why is there almost no distinction between those who serve God and those who don't. The Bible says there's going to come a day when you're going to be able to tell. But right now, um, sometimes you can't pick them out of the crowd. Sometimes you can. The Jesus bumper stickers are, you know, dead giveaway. But sometimes you can't. Well, well you know, my, my question is, why is that? Well, Hosea 4, 4, 6, I think it is, says that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's because we can know Jesus and not know his principles. It's because... We have not, as Christians as a whole, I believe, really applied our hearts to understanding and pursuing God's expertise of living on planet Earth like we would for hidden treasure, like we would for silver, like we, would, we, we will spend 40 hours a week, 8 hours a day, pursuing silver, pursuing money and income and things like that. We will go... Uh, to school from age of five until if you go, you know, graduate from high school at 18 and then you go to college until you're you know, 22 and maybe you get a master's degree, you'll spend years and years and years uh, learning worldly knowledge, which is great, right? Uh, math and all that kind of stuff. It's fine. It's good. Um, nothing wrong with that. But we'll spend years and, and, you know, people will take out student loans and everything to get, you know, to, to know history and to get a degree. Well, why? Because it's the, they're, they're pursuing uh, silver. So they're pursuing uh, you can go out and get a better job. You can have a better quality of life. And that's all great stuff. But what if we pursued the knowledge of God to the same degree? I and mean, we just don't. I mean, they're so far apart, they're not even the same galaxy. We'll spend 40 hours a week at a job, and we complain when the, the pastor goes over uh, 10 minutes in a sermon because we want to get home and watch football. That's just a fact. So we don't have the same level of intensity that, that Proverbs uh, is telling us about right here. <sighs> For... The Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Like I said earlier, this is something that God doesn't keep from us. This is God, something that God keeps for us. 
Um, it's for his people. Why? Because he loves us and because he wants to bless us. That's amazing to me. And, if, and just like I said in the previous verse, every solution is found in him. There's nothing that's going to stump him. Uh, there's nothing that's going to stump him. There's nothing that's going to trump him. There's, I don't know, I can't think of anything else that rhymes. Um, but he's got, he's got the answer. Now, to me, there's such a peace that comes with that. There's such a, a security and, uh, that comes with that and a settling in my heart because I know that there's nothing that I can, I can bring to him that he can't handle. And it's real easy to say this stuff. I know this, and it's not anything you haven't heard in church before. Like God can, God's in control. God can take care of anything. That's true, but in our hearts, do we actually live that way? Do we actually believe that? Where, God, this is so big for me, I can't figure out how to get this done. Well, exactly, but fortunately, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. He's got the solution. Do you realize that none of your problems come as a surprise to God? None. Whether they're self-induced issues or things that God is um, doing in your life to teach you and to grow you and to give you a chance to apply um, what you've learned and uh, to apply faith and stuff like that and to grow you up and to make you more Christ-like, there's, there's nothing that surprises him. It's pretty awesome. To me, that's like really reassuring that I can't screw up past the wisdom and the grace of God. It's pretty awesome. All right, verse 8. He guard, it's already 21 minutes. Shoot. I might, have to, I might have to do the old half a chapter here and half a chapter next time thing. Um, he guards the path of justice and he preserves the way of his saints. That's what the wisdom of God will do. That's what living your life by God's principles will do. Guards the path of justice, which is rightness. And of course, there's, there's applications on a macro level, like for nations and a, and a, um, a, a justice system and with, with, <laughs> with courts and judges and stuff like that. Uh, but also in our own lives, he, he guards the paths of justice or, or right ways. God's, God's word in your life will protect you. It will keep you Right, it preserves the way of his saints. You know, as a as a pastor, one of or the probably the top um, prayer requests I get really boil down to: I have problems in my family, I have problems with my money, and I'm scared I'm going to fail. That's really that's really what it boils down to. Ninety nine percent of the prayers: there's some problem in my family, there's a problem in my money, I'm scared I'm going to fail. I'm scared of a fear of failure. This verse right here says that he preserves the way of his saints. See, we can do things that mess us up because we make wrong decisions that are contrary to the word of God. Every tragedy in your life, every problem in your life can be traced back to a broken law of God somewhere. Pretty near every one of them. A broken law of God. Uh, obviously every sin but the ultimate tragedy was mankind falling into sin and that came obviously from transgressing God's law um, every every blessing will come from obeying God's law and doing things his way when we begin to implement and apply and I'm going to wrap this up because it's getting, it's getting long because I'm running off with the mouth of talking we begin to apply seek with all our heart and treat it like treasure, and when we find a principle of God that we're not doing in our life, we immediately begin to apply that and ask God to show us how to uh, implement those things in our life. That's an area of your life that's going to be safe. That's an area of your life that's going to be preserved. That's, you know, and you want your whole, you can get your whole life that way. You can get your whole life that way, where you lay your head on your pillow and you're like, dude, I'm, I'm good. And see, when you're coming from that place and you're not living in a perpetual, constant crisis, when your life is not a perpetual trial. It, no, when your life is abundant life, like Jesus said he came to give you, which he did, you can go help people. You can go back and help people that are in the throes of turmoil and crisis and problems and things like that. It, literally, to me, that is, this is written for, it's on my phone. This is written for a reason. This is not just in here to sound good. This is in here for the express purpose of getting all of us to a place that God wants us to get to so that we can reach the world. We can reach those around us and we can bless them you know, spiritually. Uh, we can bless them uh, in material things or however God calls us to be a blessing. You know, that's, like it says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. Well, that's all what we're called to do. 
we're blessed. This was freely given to us, uh, and so we're supposed to freely give. And that, to me, is the cool thing about serving the Lord is that when you're raised in um, religion or you're in religion, that's a man-made structure and system. A lot of man philosophy comes in, which is basically like dangling that carrot that you could just never quite reach because you're just not good enough and you're such a little worm and you, you know, you're just a sinner and you're just a ratty old thing and hope maybe God will have mercy on your soul and let you sneak into heaven without looking at no one. It's like that's not scriptural at all. We're supposed to have abundant life. We're the righteousness of God. And all these promises, those, most of them are conditional. Probably all of them are conditional. They're, they're for us. God is telling us how to navigate this existence we have on planet Earth. I heard someone say one time, we're not, uh, we're not physical beings having a, a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a, a natural or physical experience. This physical world is very temporary. The spirit will go on for eternity. So... God has given us the way to navigate this short time we have on the earth and to not only get through it, but to thrive and to win at it. So when we get to the end of it, it's well done, good and faithful servant, which is what we all want to hear. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this thing off and uh, probably finish this one on the next video. But um, I'll just say, man, thanks everyone for lighting up a cigar and, and watching and being a part of Bless Leave. Really appreciate you. And uh, if you haven't signed up on the website, do so. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. It's at blessed underscore leaf and um yeah we'll update you as soon as we can on the new blessed leaf cigar shoot maybe i'll tell you the name of it maybe next time all right we'll see you later god bless